My name is Jenna Streit. I serve as the Advancement Director for the Milk Bank. And um, my colleague, Diane Wade, is also here today. You're going to hear from her a little bit later. We are so excited to have you here today to address the topic of burnout. It's certainly what's on everyone's mind today. And after nearly two years of some of the most stressful parenting that we can imagine, our bodies are just stuck in fight or flight mode. You may have even surpassed the feeling of decision fatigue. If you're like me, you might be feeling a bit crispy. We're glad that you're here and that you've made yourself a priority. We're excited for our presenters today and their introductions to strategies for coping and healing. You might be wondering why an organization like the Milk Bank is hosting such an event. It's because we have the tremendous honor of working alongside parents, caregivers, and care providers in taking care of tiny humans, including critically ill infants that we serve. All of that in the midst of a pandemic. And even so, you keep showing up to advocate for infant health, to care for your own children. Some of you even carve out the time and energy to donate milk. We are in awe of you. Our job is to help families celebrate more first birthdays. And we're one part of a collective effort to reduce infant mortality by providing pasteurized donor human milk to fragile infants. We are a living tissue bank, similar to a blood bank. Our role is both prevention in advancing breastfeeding and intervention, providing that living tissue human milk to babies. If you believe in the mission of the Milk Bank and value education like today's session, I invite you to make a financial gift to support the Milk Bank. Thank you for your support. Um, a couple of housekeeping items before we get started. All participants are muted. You are encouraged to leave your camera on and we will be um, having dynamic conversation. Please share your questions to the chat. And today's session is recorded. We know parenting has lots of interruptions and if you have to step away, we're gonna be sending the recording to all of our registered participants so you can watch. We are thrilled to have Christy Goss and Melanie holt Falf of Ignite Wellbeing with us today. Melanie and Christy are both advanced practitioners of mind-body medicine. And to give you the most time possible with Christy and Melanie, we're zipping through the intros and getting right to the subject matter. You'll find their impressive bios in the chat. Without further ado, I'm gonna turn this over to Christy and Melanie. The screen is yours. Thanks so much. Jenna, thank you. And we, Christy and I want to thank the Milk Bank for inviting us to be with you for this next hour. And, and really, we want to thank you for taking your own time to focus on yourself and your well being. You know, we really personally believe that um, this information that we're sharing today is foundational to um, your well being journey. And, and the amazing part of it is that, you know, our, our bodies are made to be resilient and, and to heal from stress and trauma. Today is going to be really brief. Um, there's so much more we can teach, but we have an hour to share with you some of the science behind mind-body medicine, and we do want you to experience a couple of the tools that we that we teach so you can kind of get a taste of what it's like um, to, to um, start your well-being journey. Um, Diane and Jenna went over some of the technology. We're really, we're um, casual presenters. We're going to be going through a lot of material in the hour. So if you have questions um, that come up for you, please feel free to put them in the chat and um, Diane will kind of filter them or if she feels like something is, is pertinent to share, we'll try to answer on the fly. Otherwise, we promise we'll get your questions answered and, and get information to you after the presentation. We plan on sharing our slide deck um, with you and, and um, any, like I said, answers or, or questions that we can answer for you. Um, so with the housekeeping out of the way, I'll introduce myself very briefly. Uh, I'm Melanie holt Falth. I am a registered nurse, been in healthcare for 30 years, hard to believe. Um, I am an advanced practitioner in mind-body medicine, and my passion is to share this information with caregivers of all ages. I went into nursing um, wanting to help heal people, 
And um, really this resonates with me because of the passion I have in helping people prevent sickness um, and, and get on the, on the healthier side of things. So Christy, would you like to introduce yourself? I would, thank you, my dear friend. And in full disclosure, Melanie and I are colleagues, but we're also dear friends who have known each other for 30 years. So I'm thrilled to be doing this work alongside her. In my bio, you'll see I'm a social worker by training. I, my past um, number of years have been working with schools and their community partners and addressing whole child well-being. And in the course of that work, I kept we would talk about self-care of educators, of parents, of the community partners, um, but it would often be this kind of afterthought, this kind of side thing. You'll actually hear us not say self-care a lot because it's gotten kind of that connotation of get something else for very, very busy people to do like all of you. So we'll be talking a lot about well-being today. And in the course of that, I was introduced because my heart was getting drawn there. I was introduced to mind-body medicine, which you will be hearing us talk a lot about today. Um, and it really changed my life. It changed me personally. And I've been through lots of programs as somebody who works in mental health that I've adored. But when I met the people that were doing this work, there was something different about them. And when I first started this, the whole training was about changing me, about my own healing first so that I could then heal others. And it's just my privilege to be sitting here today. Melanie said the word journey. And uh, well-being, for me, I will say it's a lifelong journey for me, for all of us. And, and we hope today you start to realize uh, this helps to put you on a path, not just your own personal path, your, but a path connected to other people and your, your own journey of well-being. And I join Melanie in thanking the Milk Bank for making a space for this for all of you and, and, and what you bring to your own lives. And so um, I, we are going to start, and I'm going to turn it back over to Melanie, with just a quote from a book that I love called The Rhythm of Compassion. And you will hear that word said a lot by Melanie and I today, compassion. Um, we, I know you all are empathetic people, your parents, and you probably bring that out into the world in many different ways. And empathy is, compassion is really how we take empathy and put it into action. And so I invite you all just to sit back and to take in these few short words, this quote from this book, and then I'll turn it back over to Melanie. And so here's the quote. Breathing in represents caring for self, and breathing out signifies compassion for others. There's a strong tendency in many compassionate people to breathe out, 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 and to neglect the precious in breath. Our American culture does not encourage breathing in. Rather, it pushes us towards constant activity and gouges our worth by how busy we are. This attitude affects everyone but it is especially applies to people in service professions and those whose lives involve full-time caregiving. If we have compassion for ourselves, we will continually become a healing presence for others without saying a word or doing anything extraordinary. We will convey kindness by our presence, by our attitude toward their suffering and our own. And from that space, I'm gonna bring it back to Melanie who's gonna lead us in a beautiful breath. Yeah, so um, if everyone can just get comfortable in their chair, put their feet on the ground, put your, you know, find a place to rest your back and close your eyes or look down at the ground. I'd like to just lead us in a few breaths together before we start our presentation because you'll learn um, that breathing is so important and we forget as humans to uh, pay attention to our breath. So if you can close your eyes or look down in a soft gaze, we'll just take a minute to breathe together and breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth. Take the time to try to relax those places in your body that are feeling tense. Breathing in, saying soft to yourself and out, saying belly. We say that because we want you to relax your abdomen, relax your muscles that will help relax the rest of your body. Breathing in, relaxing your forehead, out your jaw, shoulders, wherever you hold your stress.
Trying to let your thoughts go that come into your mind. Just take a few short breaths together before we move on. When you're ready, open your eyes and join us back in our presentation. Let's check in real quick. So um, Brene Brown, if some of you haven't heard of her, I would really uh, encourage you to check her out. She's a wonderful speaker, writer. She's a social worker by trade. And we stole this wheel from her. And I think it's important for us all. Awareness, besides breathing, is really an underpinning of mind-body medicine. Being aware of what you bring to your conversations with others, to your work, to your relationships. You know, how are you feeling in your body? And so we use this wheel as a way for people to check in um, and kind of like, where are you? Where, where are you in your head? How are you feeling uh, in this moment? And we'd like to invite you all to just put in the chat, you know, what words resonate with you. You don't have to use the wheel, um, but what comes up for you? Because if you can name it, um, you can tame it. You can, you can um, identify what you're feeling and then you know kind of what you need to do to respond to that. And the tools that we'll talk about is, um, will help with that. Um, you know, in our society today, we're not allowed to, we're not trained to understand and pay attention to our emotions. We fill our time with so much activity. We pour ourselves out to everyone else and wear that as a badge of honor. Um, and that takes mental and physical tolls on our body. Um, you'll hear us talk about how this journey starts with us. We can't um, and actually, Christy, you can go on to the next slide. We know that our world is broken right now. And um, we, even before the pandemic, knew that there was so much healing that needed to happen. Uh, but what, we, what you'll learn after talking with us today or listening to us is that in order to heal our communities, whether that's our, our relationships, our work settings, our, in our churches, wherever, we have to start with ourselves. And by becoming more aware and um, listening to what's in our bodies and in our minds, we'll be able to have more empathy toward others in our communities. You can go on to the next slide, slide Christy. Um, Mind-body medicine is really about um, learning how both our mental uh, mind, our mental health, or in our physical health um, come together. It's a beautiful model. Um, it was, uh, like I said, the, the work that we are bringing to you today comes from the Center for Mind-Body Medicine that was founded in uh, 1991 by Dr. James Cord Gordon. He's a Harvard psychiatrist by trade uh, and has developed this model that's been tested over and over again in communities and individuals uh, around the world that we've worked with um, uh, communities in Kosovo, war-torn war nations, um, Haiti and with earthquake victims and communities, um, hurricanes here in the U.S. and most recently the Capitol Police during the insurrection, gosh, almost a year ago now, it's hard to believe, um, but it really teaches that through your what you think, feel, and believe affects your body and your physiology. Um, and how you treat your body affects your feelings and what you think, feel, and believe. And so that connectivity and understanding some of the science behind that is really important as you learn how, how and what you need um, in your well-being journey because our body is amazing and it wants to bring ourselves back into balance. Um, so we just need to, to help it a little bit. You can go on to the next slide, Christy. Um, Mind-body medicine is based on research and that's what I love being a healthcare practitioner. It, I wanna know that there's data behind it. So there's a lot of research behind this work. It helps us build again, like I said, the self-awareness. Uh, we teach a lot of skills. Um, and then they're very applicable to life. They're easy to be um, integrated into what you do on a day-to-day -day, day -day basis. Um, we talk a lot about the importance of developing peer um, kind of support groups in a safe place where you can share uh, accountability and, and share what you're going through and how important that is. Um, 
and it brings about healing, like I said, individually and collectively as communities. Chrissy, I'll swing it over to you. Oh, you're muted. It would be good. So before I kind of get into the science part of this, it's only a few slides. Um, I did want to first of all, thank Melanie for that breath. I always, I've been doing this, a lot of breath work in my own life, but I sometimes don't realize how much I need it. So thank you for that. And I also want to check in and I do, I know Melanie did this, but I encourage you all to, to check in in the chat. Um, Cause when we share with each other, we learn and we also reduce stigma and we just kind of hold a space for each other. So today I am checking in, um, grateful to be here. I'm a little emotionally exhausted because we just ended five days of CMBM training, but I'm also um, really, really tremendously hopeful to be sitting in front of all of you today doing this work alongside Melanie and the Milk Bank. So I encourage you while I'm talking to check in and you'll see um, the different emotions and feelings and you might go, hmm, I wonder how I am doing today. So we would love to know as well. So um, I, I invite you to sit back to the science portion of this. It's really three slides. It's the, it's the thousand foot view of this and just take in, into yourself how beautifully you're made to be self-healing and to understand that, to understand our, how holistic our physiology really is. It's important that we understand our autonomic nervous system. Don't worry about that language. Um, just take in the next few slides. And to understand that, we really need to have a de definition and a shared understanding of stress. And Jenna mentioned it at the beginning, Melanie has talked about it. We all know what, when we say the word stress, do we hardly ever are, are saying something positive. I hardly ever hear, I don't think I ever hear somebody go, you know what, I am, I am stressed, I am stressed today. But stress, positive stress is really important in our lives. It is what upregulates us. Uh, Melanie and I had to have positive stress in our life today to come here and be ready to present to you. I need positive stress when I go into a new social interaction and I want to rise to that challenge. We talk a lot to our students and to parents that learning itself is positive stress. Students have something new and novel, something they're trying to achieve, and that is a stress. And so being supported in that space to rise to the challenge is positive stress. And it's literally the space where we learn and we grow in internally and, and with each other. And then there's tolerable stress. I think there's not a person on the planet that doesn't resonate, doesn't have tolerable stress in their lives, especially through this pandemic. Um, it is serious, but temporary stress. And the key is it's buffered by protective factors, both internal and external. We know two people that can experience the same stressors or even traumatic stressors in their lives. And one person continues to function well, and another one does not. And that has so much to do with the perception of the threat and the protective factors people have in their lives. And the number one protective factor, and you'll hear us talk about this a number of times, is often, if I said, what helps you get through that stress? What helps you manage? What helps you cope? People will often point to relationships, but they'll also talk to their spirituality and, and movement and exercise and nature and their pets. It really can um, vary from person to person. But the area that we become concerned about, of course, is that, that red circle at the end, the toxic stress, prolonged activation of the stress response without protective factors. And we can get into that red area. We're gonna talk a lot, awareness of stress and how it's impacting us in our lives is key. And we're gonna talk about that in just a minute, but also is our perception of the stress that's coming into our lives. To understand this a little bit better, let's look a little more closely at our autonomic nervous system. And Jenna or, or um, Diane, if you wanna chime in, if somebody's put something in the chat, please interrupt me at any time or just wanna share people's emotions. We would love to hear. We miss being in front of people and in a room with you, especially when we're doing a presentation like this. And so our autonomic nervous system, and you'll see on the right, you can really think of it as the brakes and the gas of your body. It's what upregulates you, right? The gas and what downregulates you, the brakes. And so people, it's the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system or the fight or flight response and the rest and digest. And so what essentially is happening all day long is you are getting inputs from your environment. 
your external environment and your internal environment. And messengers are being sent to your brain. And the primary purpose of our brains is for our safety to keep us alive. Everything else comes after that. And so, our, so when those inputs are coming into our body, and take this in mainly in our unconscious awareness. We're not aware of when these things are happening. It is read by the emotional and fear center of our brain, namely the amygdala and the hippocampus. Don't need to remember those. Mainly in the unconscious level, is this familiar? Is this safe or is this new or novel? Is this some kind of a threat? There is lots of research that we are doing this six times every single second using a lot of energy in our bodies. It is read at that moment, and if it is some level of stressor, positive, tolerable, or toxic, a message is sent immediately to our endocrine system, namely our adrenal, adre adrenal gland down by our kidneys. And at that point, adrenaline or cortisol are released, and we are upregulated. Our blood pressure goes up, our heart rate goes up, our digestion goes down to use energy in other places, our blood sugar levels go up. You can see all of that on the slide in the sympathetic response. And then when that stress is removed or we engage a coping strategy of some kind, we engage the rest and digest and we calm our heart rates. We, our, our blood pressure goes down, our blood sugar levels goes down, our body comes back down. And this is us. All, oops, I went from my head. This is us every day, this blue line, when we are in balance, upregulating and downregulating, upregulating and downregulating, using energy recovering, using energy refueling all day long. That's us in homeostasis or in balance. It's where we want to be. But we can very easily, all of us, get into this green line where we get stuck. We are not even aware that we are entering into too much, too much stress, right? Or as a coping strategy, we've gone to rest and digest and we've checked out. And so becoming aware is key. And so, and I'm gonna to touch, we talked a little bit more about meditation. A huge part of this is understanding our vagus nerve. And our vagus nerve is this beautiful nerve that runs from the base of our spine up to the, from our, the bottom of our spine up to the base of, um, of our neck up here by our head. And it engages, when we engage our breath, we engage every other system of our body. And understanding our vagus nerve, Melanie, when she started this at the very beginning and she did a breath with us, we engaged that vagus nerve and we calmed our nervous system. And I'm gonna talk more about this when we get to the meditation point. But this, this part that I just did was a lot about the mind and the body, but you saw in the model, that there's three different pieces to this. And here's the all of the impact that it can have mind, body, and spirit in a negative way when we're not addressing our stress, right? You can understand your body is affected if your blood sugar levels are up all the time, your, your um, heart rate's up all the time, your blood pressure's up, there's gonna be physical impact to that. And same with the mind and then with our spiritual health. And, but I wanna turn this back over to Melanie because she's, there's a lot of, the spiritual part is key, and it's really where the awareness piece comes in in this model, and we all have lots of different definitions of what spirituality means to us. We want um, to, to uh, create a, a space here to really have a shared definition that was given to us by the center, so we'll turn it back over to Melanie. Now you're, now you're on mute. <laughs> I uh, love technology. So you can go on to the next, yeah, next slide. So spirituality is, as you saw in the previous slide, there's the three rings, mind, body, and spirit. And the spiritual part of ourself is that part of ourself that is looking for it, it, what gives our life meaning, um, looking for something larger than ourselves, our ability to be able to empathize um, with others. And, you know, there is a difference between spirituality and religion. Spirituality is in the heart of every religion. Um, religion is the name we give to the way that we organize our spiritual practices. Um, there's been a really interesting um, study that's been going on since the 30s of some uh, over 250 Harvard um, undergrads. They've studied them for over 75 years. It's called the Grant Study there on the slide. 
um, and they've come up with finding the the true uh, indicators or pillars of uh, what helps with human flourishing or happiness are all um, qualities that fall kind of under our spiritual realm. And a lot of them are childlike, quite frankly. Um, gratitude, awe, wonder, joy, compassion, and love. Um, those are all um, areas in our spiritual life that are important to pay attention to and that to to nourish to help us um, bring that that happiness that we all look for. So the mind body model is about balancing our our mental health, our spiritual health and our physical health to to be the best um, person that we can be. And I think before we, we just have a lot to go through still in this last hour, but I wanted to ask if you had anything that's coming up for you at this point in the presentation, um, please feel free to put that in the chat. And again, we'll collect all of that and um, answer anything that's coming up for you um, or any questions that you have. Please don't hesitate. We will share our um contact information at the end of the session. So you can even send it to us directly if you'd like. I'm gonna move on and talk about self-awareness. You know, we talked about that um, as at the check-in about how important it is to be self-aware. Um, Christy, you can go on to the next, the next slide. Definition of self-awareness is how we know and understand ourselves. What are our thoughts and feelings? Um, how is stress impacting us? You know, taking a minute every day, then Christy will talk about breathing, every day to breathe um, and just sit and think about how we're feeling in our bodies. Um, next slide. Because, you know, what that does is as we become more self-aware, as we just slow down and pay attention, it helps us have more empathy and compassion for others. I'm sure many of you have seen the, the iceberg analogy, but it is so good. It shows that, you know, when you see someone, what you're seeing is just the surface of the iceberg and there's a whole bunch going on underneath, underneath uh, the water. So it's the same for us, you know, we put on a face and we show the world what we want them to see, but there's a lot to us that, that sometimes we aren't tapped into. So that, that self-awareness and that taking time to take care of our own well-being um, will only help us help those around us in our communities. Christy's going to start sharing about some of the most uh, foundational tools in the in the mind body model. Um, I will. You can go on to the next slide. And Melanie, what I'd say to what I this is the heart of compassion. This slide, and we started with compassion. Okay. We often get upset with ourselves when we are looking at that tip of the iceberg. We're frustrated with how we're reacting to things, what we're doing in our lives. And we don't take the time to go deeper and see where it's really coming from. And when we do, we have so much more compassion for ourselves. And like that quote we started with at the beginning, when we have that compassion for ourselves, when we start to look under the surface, we start to naturally have it for other with others in our life. And so we are Thank you, Christy. More. Yep. Yep. So tools for the toolbox. Um, I've mentioned... Uh, there are several tools that we teach in mind body medicine. We're going to just, we, breathing is one, which you got a little bit of experience of that. And we're gonna do some drawings. Um, you can go to the next slide. This is uh, all of, well, in the vagus nerve. Yes, thank you. Um, as Christy talked about breathing and the vagus nerve and how it stimulates so much in our brain and in our bodies that that uh, these tools all very much draw on um, on working with that vagus nerve. You can go on to the next slide, Christy. Oh, sorry. I've got my slides out of order. Go ahead and you can talk about breathing. Oh no, you're absolutely fine. And so we, that as Melanie was just beautifully reminding us about our vagus nerve. And so um, we're gonna talk about meditation here in just a little bit. And some of you may practice meditation in its various forms, um, but let's 
understanding our breath is really important. There are, right, we have lots of systems in our body. We have our skeletal system, our digestive system, circulatory system, we can go on and on. And all the other systems of the body are one of two things. They're either auto, autonomic, so they happen automatically without us even thinking about it, like our digestion and our breathing, uh, sorry, hold the breathing part, our digestion and our circulatory system. And then some are um, voluntary, meaning we've got to think in order for them to happen, namely our skeletal system and our muscular systems. There's only one system that is both autonomic and voluntary, and that's our respiratory system, our breath. We are breathing automatically, hopefully, but we can also engage that breath, mainly by engaging um, the vagus nerve that has us calm ourselves right from the beginning. And so we can engage that system at any time to engage all the other major systems of our body. And I love when Melanie was talking about spirituality, it is that it, um, spirit and breath are often thought of in the same way. And when we engage our breath, it helps us to turn internal, to shut out the external and go inside to that beautiful awareness um, that Melanie was talking about. And there's three types of meditation that we want to talk about today. I wish we had time to leave you, lead you through a strong experiential on this, but Melanie started with a beautiful one. The first one is concentrative meditation, and it's just like the name sounds. It's when we concentrate on something to, shut, to go to a place of stillness and awareness. Prayers are an example of this, mantras, visualizations, things that really help us to uh, focus on something, to go to that place of stillness. And there's awareness meditation, which is also known um, as mindfulness meditation. And this you can bring into any aspect of your life. There's often a connotation we have to sit like a yogi and have something going on with bells or something like that. And it's literally, right, we're often thinking of what happened in the past or ruminating about what needs to be done in the future. It's about bringing us to that present moment awareness. I don't know how many of you have driven down a street and you're driving, driving, you're like, how did I get here? Because I don't remember anything I just saw and I don't know how I didn't hit somebody. It's because our mind is doing what our mind does. And I often use gratitude personally to bring myself to this place. I will notice three things that are beautiful on a drive, I'm taking a walk. I'm gonna say three things that I'm grateful for in nature as I'm walking and it brings me to that present moment awareness. And it really starts with breath. And the third type is actually one that our culture is not as comfortable with, but many other cultures are. And it is the, it is the oldest form of meditation and that is expressive meditation. Shaking, movement, tapping. There's um, an exercise we'd encourage you to get on and do. And so instead of going straight to stillness, you're moving, mo using movement to come to a place of stillness. Our society is most used to yoga as an example of that. You will see, we have given you a number of resources you'll receive with a link. And uh, Dr. Uh, Gordon from the Center for Mind-Body Medicine leads you through a shaking and dancing exercise that might feel uncomfortable at first, but I can't tell you how powerful it has been in my life, as silly as I felt I was when I first got up and started moving. We are meant to move. And you've often seen animals, when they've had a stress, how they shake, that is a natural response to stress that helps to self-regulate us and get us unstuck. And I think we all know, when I say when we feel stuck, um, you use crispy at the end, Jenna, and I wonder if crispy and stuck are similar emotions, but we can, you, pro you probably know that, you know that better than I do. And so, um, my slide is not switching, and now back to Melanie, who's going to talk a little bit about some <laughs> other things. Sorry. So yes, somebody just asked if running can be an expressive meditation. Absolutely, absolutely it can be. Um, so this is an example of some of those skills um, in the mind-body model. Uh, in the there's your link, and again, we'll we'll send out a one page or two of some ideas uh, and resources that you can tap into. But cmbm.org is Center for Mind-Body Medicine, and and there are wonderful resources out there, all for free. Um, so that's probably just an essence of time. That's what I'll I'll go back to uh, referencing that we can send you after the presentation. So you can probably move on, Christy. Perfect. So we are going to do a little bit of a longer um, uh, activity, and it has to do with drawing. For those of you who are not drivers, do not get stressed in any way. <laughs> and this is for your own personal use. Um, and this comes from, the, it is one of the skills from Center for Mind-Body Medicine. So take out your crayons, 
or your markers, and I encourage you to dump them out so you can grab, you can just naturally be drawn to any colors that you want. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about creativity and drawing and, and journaling can really fit under this as well. Um, doing these kinds of activities can really bypass our conscious mind, our thinking mind that we're so used to being in all the time and tap into that intuition, that inner voice, that awareness. Some people might call it a higher spiritual place within themselves to bring forth things that, that are really in our unconscious awareness. Um, Melanie, I love the way she says, just be playful with this. Um, let your inner child come out. First thought is best thought when I give you a prompt for these um, and just go with what comes to you. And the more you do these things, we talk about neuroplasticity, the easier they come. So um, don't be frustrated with yourself if it takes a minute. We will start with a breath when I give you the prompt. Let whatever rises, rise. Don't judge it, just go with what comes and then draw. And when you draw, I'm a stick figure girl, so it doesn't have to be an art project. Some people do it with emotions and they don't draw a picture at all and then they label it afterwards. Just go with what comes. Melanie or I are gonna, I think Melanie's gonna share her drawing because we always do these right alongside people as we're doing them with you because we're always learning and growing in our own journeys. Um, she will share hers, I believe, and then maybe one or two of you might um, volunteer to share as well, because we learn so much from each other um, in our own humanity and our own journeys. And so um, I'm also hopefully going to play some music in the background while you're all doing this, but we never know with technology if that will work or not. So take out your first piece of paper and up in the corner, write your name and put the date and put drawing one. And then I'm gonna invite you to close your eyes if you're comfortable. And if not, just let your gaze go gently to the floor and start to engage that breath, shutting out the external and going inward. And this is your first prompt. And you don't need to start drawing until something comes to you. Just stay with that breath. Your first drawing is going to be to draw yourself with a problem. Doesn't have to be your biggest one. Issue, challenge, or symptom that arises. And then begin to draw. I'm going to give you about, given our time, I'm going to give you about three minutes to do the drawing. Don't worry if you don't finish it. I think while you're sitting and thinking, um, just to reiterate, just draw the first image that comes to your mind of your biggest challenge, issue, symptom.
give you one more minute. No stress, don't worry if it's not finished. Okay, begin to finish up that picture and set it aside. And take out your other piece of paper. And go ahead and close your eyes. You'll put your name and the date and drawing two at the corner of that. And then after you've done that, go ahead and close your eyes. Engage that breath. Start to go internal. And then start to picture yourself with this problem, issue, or challenge or symptom solved. The problem, issue, challenge, or symptom solved. Begin to draw. So begin to wrap up this one, from knowing you can return to it later. Set it aside. I'll turn it back over to Melanie. It's gonna kind of lead us in a lead us in a short sharing in the interest of time. Yeah. Okay, so. Christy asked if I would volunteer to, um, to share my drawings. And this time, sometimes when I do this, I come up with pictures or other times there's words. And 
Christy probably mentioned it, but this is a great tool to use if you're feeling stuck at a crossroads or you need to make a decision or you're just feeling out of sorts and you can't, can't get a clear picture of why. Um, and I've kind of been feeling that way lately. I've, I've been feeling a little stuck. Um, and so what came to me, I don't know if you can see it, is um, just so much potential with a bunch of line, you know, colorful lines underneath it. But yet in the corner, I've got me with a kind of a grr, I, I just in question marks, just um, frustrated. Like I, I know there's a lot I can do, but I just, um, I'm feeling kind of stuck. So my problem solved was a lot of green grass. Nature is really big for me and then being in the woods and in the mountains. So a lot of green and then I'm just on this path. And I think my problem solved is I'm smiling, my heart's full. And then the words unstuck, less critical um, and positive self-love because I know about myself that I am, I am my absolutely own, own worst critic. Um, and that's one of the things that I'm working on is trying to be nicer to myself. So that was interesting. It had a little bit of picture and words in it. Does anybody feel like they'd like to share their drawings? Anyone feel, feel called to share? I know Diane, you'll have to unmute them if they wanted to. Anyone feeling brave? Okay. Oh, Kristen, you've raised your hand. Thank you for being willing and vulnerable to share. Sure. Can you guys hear me? Mm hmm Okay. Um, so mine, I don't know if you can see, but it's like a big dollar sign in the middle of like a bunch of hearts. And so like I, I started a nonprofit um, last year and it's been like exactly the thing that I've wanted to do with my life, but it's also meant like we're just a really hard time financially. And so it's like, the problem is like, you know, I need this part, but like, I'm so focused on sort of the heart, you know, the, the love part or like the passion of what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's, that's where I came with that. And then, um, and this is just also very abstract, but it's more about like, okay, like continuing to focus on, the passion that I have for what I'm doing and then just kind of the flow of, you know, the, the, the money part kind of working itself out just by continuing mm -hmm. to like focus on, um, on the passion for, for helping parents. So. Thank you. How'd that feel to do that exercise? How'd that feel for you? Um, it was good. I, I like visual stuff. So, you know, mm -hmm. it was, it was interesting because I had no idea what I was going to do. And then it just sort of came out. And then when we were talking about the solution, it was like, I, I kind of changed color schemes and was kind of, I don't know, kind of added in some other things. It was, I thought it was a good exercise for sure. Yeah. And it is something, I mean, if you are like stuck, as I mentioned, doing that several days in a row, being calm and just drawing whatever comes up for you. Some of these tools will resonate more with people than others. Other people like to journal and writing it out is, is more impactful for them. So you have to play with some of it and, and see, but I have found drawing is not something that I would have done prior to, to learning some of this. And, and it really has helped me kind of break through um, some stuckness some stuckness. Um, let's see, we probably need to move on, Christy. So we want to go on to the next slide. Melanie, thank you for leading us. And Kristen, thank you for sharing. Sure. We learned so yes, much thank from you each much. other. We learn so mm -hmm. much from each other when people share. Um, and it's, I always learn from this too. It's not that you all have suddenly solved your problem, right? But it gives you an awareness of it. And then what's one step I can take to move from this place to this place? Because we often just stay in this place because we don't pay any attention until we're deep, until I'm deep in it with something. So 
Mm-hmm. So Melanie, thank you again for that. And so mm-hmm. peer-to-peer support, we, this is a huge part of the mind body medicine model and Diane, we're going to, if you can jump in here in just a minute, um, I would, she's been part of a peer-to-peer skills group that Melanie has led. Um, and this peer-to-peer support is so critical in this work. Um, I have learned, I said this at the beginning, that I will have a lifelong journey in my own well-being, but to do this in a community of other people where you can authentically share what you're going through, not because anybody else is there to fix you or to offer suggestions or to solve something, but a belief that we all have the ability to come to our own awareness and our own healing and to do that in a safe healing space is a critical piece of this model. And this is something we can bring into our work, into our lives in very authentic ways. It doesn't have to be through a mind-body medicine skills group. Um, But Diane, I wonder if you would jump in. Um, You're kind enough to say that you'd share just a little bit about your experience in that and how impactful it is. Yeah, um, thank you. Uh, And actually, it's interesting that you chimed in at this point with the peer-to-peer support um, because I was part of an eight-week Uh, mind-body medicine course and the peer-to-peer support uh, was probably the thing that was most responsible for my success throughout because kind of like that opening quote of like always breathing out and not in, I never would have taken that time for myself but because I was responsible uh, like being held accountable by other people that I would show up for. So um, even though the tools like may all speak to us in different ways, uh, like you might not be into drawing or you might have trouble with one of the kinds of meditation, uh, the, the largest takeaways I had was that one, being accountable to another group is what kept me um, committed until I was at the point I could commit to myself. And mm-hmm. the second, tip that um, they've shared that I found the most useful was to pair these tools that speak to you with something you're already doing. So it's not something new that we have to do. Like I do the soft breathing on a drive into work. Um, I really like the automatic writing, um, which is something that's on that website. Um, And because it's a two minute timer, I can set that timer in my car before I go from work to home or from home to work. And it kind of just lets me write out what's in my brain without any judgment and just kind of clear that space before I transition from home to work or back again. Um, But if I'd said, oh, I need to do these things every day, I probably wouldn't. But because I've just kind of built them into stuff I'm already doing, it's helped me be more successful. So um, those two tips, I think, were probably the biggest takeaways for me. Okay, and thank you. So, thank you so much for coming on and sharing. Oh, th- um, thanks for being here. And it's, it really is cool to do this for, for parents and I'm glad mm-hmm. you guys are all here. Yeah, we're grateful to be here. And that, and that just kind of sums up there is the number one, we can talk about all the things that resonate with us for our own well-being, nature. Melanie was talking about nature. The number one factor for all human beings um, that helps to self-regulate us is relationships and connections in our lives and the importance of having that in our lives. And so um, I, Melanie, I'm turning it back over to you with this slide. Yeah. So the potential impact of using these skills, you know, we've, we talked about the three realms of our, of our being physiologically, um, truly helping yourself get into that homeostasis or that regulation with stress. Again, we're not saying you're never going to be stressed because that's just not realistic, but learning how to help your body um, and your mind uh, be less stressed can help with blood pressure regulation, heart rate regulation, better immune responses, um, helps with pain, chronic pain, um, better sleep, better relaxation. Um, Psychologically, it helps uh, with anxiety, depression, um, and stress. And then spiritually, like I said, um, helping take care of yourself in this way helps you empathize more with others and helps you have a better perception of your life overall. So um, it really does start with us helping ourselves. 
Diane did this slide for us, the self-care action plan. Mm -hmm. It really is about, thank you, Diane. It really is about just integrating a few small things in your life initially and then exploring what other options there may be out there. You can go to those websites or some of the other things that we'll, we'll send you. Um, breathing while you're making coffee or on your way in or out of work. Uh, you know, doing a little bit of meditation, trying some different things. There's a lot of uh, free apps out there that can can help you. And again, we'll send you some of those as, as examples. Um, shaking and dancing or running or doing some active movement, because Christy's right, we are built to move in our society, especially now with the pandemic and so many people working and staying at home, we just aren't moving like our bodies need us to. So getting rid of some of that stress is um, is so important, finding ways to do that. But you really have to find what, what works for you. There's not a one solution fits all. Um, so that building a way that helps you find your own awareness of how you're feeling in the moment and, and then um, acting upon that is what's, what's important. Can we go to the next slide? Sure. And so we always like to point out that this is very, this model is very preventative and uh, promotion of well-being and how beautifully we're made to, to intervene in our own self-healing. But sometimes you need a little bit more. I am a mental health professional and um, we, there are times when you need more and we always want to acknowledge that and provide people with resources as well. So that's in these slides and you can see that all here. And we really end with this slide that this is where we, we started with this. Um, this is a journey, not a destination. Be kind to yourself, be compassionate in this journey and find others to take the journey with you. And we are so grateful to the Milk Bank um, and to all of you who are very busy, especially this time of year, that you took the time to take care of yourselves today. Um, and so we, with that, we have questions. We you will be putting out, I know the Milk Bank has a resource that will have some links to where you can try some of these practices. Um, and we encourage you to do that and reach out to Melanie and I at any time we're here for support. So thank you very much. Diane, is that the survey you put on the, in the chat? Yeah, it's if you would, and I may be stealing your thunder, but if you would look at the chat and go to the, the Google document that has our um, survey on it, we really want to hear from you on, we knew that an hour isn't a long time, but we wanted to get kind of the 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 key underpinnings to um, helping you on your well-being journey um, to you. So please do fill out that survey and let us know how you feel about what you heard today. Um, Thank you, Melanie. Thank you, Christy, for sharing so much with us today. Thank you for everyone that participated. Um, I know it's hard to carve out a little bit of time today and you made yourself a priority. And I think that's a great example of the start of a journey. So thank you for being with us. If the Milk Bank can help serve your family or your community, please don't hesitate to reach out. Please fill out the survey that Diane has just posted in the chat. And if you feel so inclined, please make a donation to the Milk Bank as well. Thank you so much. We hope you have a wonderful day.